So OpenAI just rolled out a brand new feature inside of ChatGPT. We now have the ability to sort of call upon multiple GPTs within one chat. Now this is a feature that's only available to ChatGPT Plus members, but it seems like it'll be pretty powerful. In this video, I wanna give you a few examples of what it's capable of, but keep in mind that I am truly just scratching the surface because there are all sorts of use cases that I haven't even thought of for this. Jumping into ChatGPT here, let me show you what I mean. If I come down to my message down in the bottom and I type at, you can see it actually lists the GPTs that I've used in the past. I could select any GPT right from here and now I can directly chat with that specific GPT. Now you do need to keep in mind that if you are going to use this, it has to be a GPT that you've already used in the past. So for example, if I come over here, explore GPTs, you can see that there's a GPT called Murder Mystery Mayhem. If I come back to chat GPT and type at murder mystery, you can see it's not populating because I've never used that GPT before. However, if you look over on my left sidebar here and I click on more, let's look at the NVIDIA one. This is one I have used recently. If I type at, and then in video, you can see that it pops that up as one of my usable GPTs. So if you wanna be able to call on these GPTs, just make sure that you use it once first, and then it'll be available in the future using this method. This video should be pretty short and sweet. I just wanna demonstrate a few little experiments that I've tried that seem to work well, but again, just scratching the surface. I know some of you smart people out there are gonna find some crazy ways to use this that I'm not even thinking of. If you do, share them with me on Twitter, I'm at Mr. Eflow. I'd love to hear of some really cool use cases and make a follow-up video down the line of what you guys are doing with this. But let's start by creating an image. Now this isn't using a GPT, I'm just gonna use Dolly. Let's create an image of a wolf eating a taco. Dolly 3 did its thing. Here's our wolf with a taco. Let's say I want this as a PDF. Well, I have a GPT that I've used in the past called convert anything. So let's call upon convert anything. I'll type at convert anything. We can see that it pops up as one of my available GPTs here. And I'll just type convert the image into a PDF. You can see convert anything is now active and analyzing the image. It gave me an error analyzing. It actually did this last time I played with this as well. It popped up an error and then after it popped up the error, it did it anyway. I have no clue why it does that, but it seems like custom GPTs tend to do that from time to time. But without me doing anything, I now have this download PDF option. If I click on this, you can see we now downloaded our wolf eating a taco PDF. If I double click on this, you can see it is the same image just in PDF format. I also have a GPT set up called PowerPoint Presentation Maker by Slides GPT. Let's go ahead and activate that one now and let's tell it to turn the image into a slide for PowerPoint. I'll just say, turn the wolf image into a PowerPoint slide and add a story to it. It made a slide for me. It says I've created a PowerPoint slide that turns the image of the wolf eating a taco into a captivating story titled The Unlikely Gourmet, A Wolf's Adventure with a Taco. It didn't actually use the image inside of the slide. Maybe that's outside of the capabilities of this specific GPT, I don't know. I'll give it an extra prompt just to test it. Please use the image that I generated of the wolf within the slide as well. Once again, it gave me an error. It tends to do that a lot, but then it just tries to figure it out again anyway. And here it tells me that it's not able to use the image that I generated in the slide. Kind of a bummer. But just in this one thread, I use two different GPTs. I guess technically three, if you want to consider Dolly 3 a GPT. But I generated an image of a wolf eating tacos. Then I use convert anything to generate a PDF. And then I use the PowerPoint presentation maker to write a story about a wolf eating tacos. Although the PDF maker that I use wasn't able to inject the image that I created. So we are gonna run into some roadblocks like this from time to time. This feature is brand new. So even I'm still trying to figure this out and I definitely think it's gonna improve over time. But let's go ahead and create a new chat, try something else here. Let's go ahead and tell it, explain to me how a three-way circuit works. It gives me a quick explanation of how the circuit works but then I'm gonna call on another GPT because now I want a diagram of how it works. So let's go ahead and use our at symbol and I'm going to use a GPT called diagrams show me. We'll select that. I'll type create a diagram to help me visualize what was just explained and hit enter. And it goes on to say, I'll create a diagram to visualize a three-way circuit for easier understanding. 
So without even needing to jump into another GPT, it's going to create the diagram for me. And just like that, I get a quick and easy diagram with options to view a full screen diagram, download a PNG, edit with Miro, or edit with code. And it brings me to a page where I can see it and see the code for it. Maybe I wanna make a quick video about this diagram that we just created. Well, I could call upon our NVIDIA video maker. Let's type at NVIDIA and we've got video maker by NVIDIA AI. And I'll type, please make a video breaking down what we've learned so far. Video maker starts its action. And then it says the video breaking down how a three-way lighting circuit works is now ready. You can watch it to get a comprehensive understanding of the components, wiring setup, etc. Title, understanding three-way lighting circuits. Watch the video here. I'll click on this right here. It's gonna pop open my NVIDIA account and we can see it is now in the process of, well, <laughs> processing my video. And just like that, we now have a two and a half minute video about how a three-way lighting circuit works. Not gonna watch the whole video, but let's take a quick peek. A three-way lighting circuit, a term that might sound complex, but is actually a simple and ingenious solution to a common problem. Picture this, a room with multiple entries or a long hallway. It would be inconvenient, not to mention energy inefficient, to have a single light switch at one end, wouldn't it? Enter the three-way lighting circuit. It's a system that allows you to control a light fixture from two different locations. This system is made possible by a few key components, two three-way switches and the light fixture or fixtures that you want to control. And there you go. There's a little 30 second snippet of the video that we just created. So just to recap what we did here, we asked ChatGPT to explain how a three-way circuit works it gave us an explanation. I then called upon the diagrams GPT to draw me a diagram. And then I called upon Video Maker by NVIDIA to make me a video about everything we had learned so far in this conversation. Let's try one more sequence of GPTs here. This time, let's go ahead and use consensus and ask it, what are the top five papers about artificial intelligence? It's gonna do a quick chat with the consensus app and tell me here are the top five papers about artificial intelligence. Now I want a diagram, why not, of these papers. So I'll add diagram and tell it to create me a diagram with the above information. And it went ahead and created a diagram with those papers. I can view the full screen diagram here. And then there's this really cool GPT that will actually take images and convert them to HTML websites for you. So check this out. If I call upon the screenshot to code GPT and tell it to convert the above diagram PNG into website code, let's see what we get. Now it did give me an error analyzing and it threw up all of these errors, but I basically asked it again, please convert the image into code. And when I asked it a second time, it actually started generating code. It actually started to write the code, but then got lazy and said additional divs for the other bubble. So it didn't actually finish the code. So I'm gonna go ahead and prompt it to continue and write the entire code for this screenshot. Don't leave placeholders. Now it wrote up code that looks like maybe it's gonna get it right this time, but I'm too lazy to copy and paste. So let's go ahead and say, give me a downloadable HTML file of the above code. Gave me a link to my HTML. Let's go ahead and download it and take a peek. Not Perfect. You remember, this is our original image. This is what it generated for us. Not amazing, but also not horrible. It did get all of the information in there. It just didn't break it up into separate boxes, but hey, it's getting there. Do all of these GPTs absolutely work perfect together right now? Not quite. But honestly, I don't think a lot of GPT creators knew that this new feature was coming. So I don't know if a lot of them actually design their GPTs to work in this way. Now that we know it's here, I have a feeling a lot of these GPT creators are going to actually start purpose building the GPTs for this functionality to sort of interact with other GPTs a little bit better. The way OpenAI describes it, this new feature is really designed to turn ChatGPT more into like a personal assistant where you don't need to jump around between a whole bunch of chats to accomplish what you want to accomplish. You can kind of accomplish everything you need within a single chat. Get me this information, turn it into a diagram, create a PDF from it, create a video from it turn the diagram into HTML code so I can turn it into a website. And you can do all of that in a single chat without having to jump around between different tools now. The thought of that is really cool. I think there are some really, really powerful implications and use cases for this. 
But again, because so many of these GPTs weren't necessarily designed with this use case in mind from the beginning, I think there's still going to be some kinks and bugs to work out. But going forward, it's going to be really, really cool to make a lot of these GPTs and functionalities talk together and interact with each other. So really exciting new update from ChatGPT. Excited to see where it goes. I've been a little bit dismissive of GPTs in the past. Talked about how I thought they weren't going to be anything special. But now that I am kind of getting the bigger picture of how they're going to tie together and what some of them are actually capable of, I'm starting to come around to the idea that these GPTs are going to actually be pretty powerful. So that's what I got for you today. Hopefully you learned something new and you jump into ChatGPT and go and experiment with this. I'm excited to see what other people figure out they can do and find new combinations of GPTs that do interesting things. Again, if you come up with some cool ones, share them with me over on the Twitters or the X's or whatever you want to call it. I am at Mr. Eflow. I can't wait to see what you come up with. If you like videos like this, make sure you give this one a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. I'll make sure more YouTube videos like this show up in your feed. I love to share AI news, AI tools, AI tutorials, and just break down all the cool stuff that's going on in the world of AI and really tech in general, but lately the focus has really been on AI. Also be sure to check out futuretools.io if you haven't already. I share all the coolest AI tools that I come across, all the latest AI news. It's updated on a daily basis. And there's a free newsletter. If you sign up for the free newsletter, I'll hook you up with the AI income database, which is a giant database of all sorts of cool ways to make money with AI. It's free. It'll be in your inbox immediately after subscribing. And every week I'll send you just the coolest tools I come across and just the most important news for the week. You can get that by joining the free newsletter over at futuretools.io. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in, nerding out with me and uh, having some fun with GPTs. Excited to see what you do with it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.